everybody, welcome back to Tanji's World of Books and welcome to another book series recommendation video. Hey you guys, so welcome back. So today I am going to be doing sort of a deep dive. Tonight we have the interview with Charles on Books on Stereo and myself with JT Gessinger. I am so happy. I'm going to see how we pronounce her name properly. I think it's Gessinger. I think that's cor the correct way to say it, but I'm going to ask her tonight. And so we're going to be doing the um, monsters, the cruel monsters, monsters, something, whatever. I'll put it below. Um, so right now there are three books out in, the ser in that series. There's going to be a fourth book that's going to be dropping like in the next couple weeks as well. So what I did in preparation for that is I read all of her series that are linked, meaning that there are characters that appear, you're introduced in one series and then you see those characters later on in other series. They're kind of like spin-offs, if you will. So I read all of those. So there are five of those series and I'm going to present them in the order that they should be read because, as I said, characters are introduced first in a particular series and then we revisit and see those characters later in other sort of spin-off series, if you will. And so the direction that you should read them is this is the Bad Habits series. This is a rock star romance and this is to be read first and then there is the Wicked, Wicked series. This is to be read next. I'm just going to call it. Then there's the Dangerous series. That's to be read next. Then Beautiful and then the Monster series to be read last. Okay, and so we're going to talk about why it occurs in that order and what makes the most sense and all of that. And for whatever reason, I don't remember what the particular name of the series is, so it's not really called. The first one is called Bad Habits for sure, but the rest of them are not called what I called them. But it doesn't matter. You get the you get the point. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about each of the books because I don't want to spoil anything for you. However, I will talk about the first book, and then I will talk about what characters appear in those books, and I'll try and make it succinct and try and make sense of all of this. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Okay, so the first book in the Bad Habits series is Sweetest Sin. This is book one. This is a rock star romance. As I've already mentioned, this is about Kat and Nico. And Kat is 20 something, right? And she is a Hollywood makeup artist. And she is on the set. She And I love this because, for those of you that don't know, I live in L.A. And everything that comes up in this particular series is all set in L.A. And it's all places that I know and all places that I've been to. And I was just like, oh my gosh, it's so cool to hear like of all of our like little hot spots that are being mentioned in a series. So I felt very represented in that way. Okay. So she's a makeup artist. She's on set for a shoot and they're shooting a music video, mega hot band called Bad Habit. And the lead singer is Nico Nix. And she is doing the makeup for Nico's longtime girlfriend. And it's very clear that she has a, the long-term girlfriend has a addiction problem and she's on set and she's drunk and she's not able to perform. So they ultimately have to send her home. There is a really fun character in here named Kenji and Kenji is like, you know, he is a stylist and a de journeur and just everything and all things and just sassy and so fun. And so he recommends that Kat stand in for Nico's girlfriend and Nico is all in for that. And so to make a long story short, Kat stands in for Nico's girlfriend and does the music video with him with him and everything sort of ensues from there but Kat is really reluctant because she's like you have a girlfriend I don't do that like you need to figure it out with your girlfriend before I ever will embark on anything with you and he is going to pursue her to the ends of the earth and I love it because he calls her out on her double standards and she doesn't take any shit from him she's headstrong she's willful she doesn't want to be ruled by anyone and he absolutely looks at it like it is love at first sight and I am going to come hell or high water get you at any cost. And so it really sort of ensues from there. Let me say that JT has the ability and the knack to write a book that you want to throw across the room but you love it every minute of it you're in for every second and you don't want to miss anything. And so she writes a really cool weave of a romance mixed in with a little bit of a mystery, with a little bit of danger 
intrigue, twists and turns, definitely plot twists, and she keeps it exciting and interesting, and like, and she takes it almost to the very end, the very last bit. You're like, there's 10 minutes left in this audiobook. Like, how the hell is this going to get resolved? Is this going to carry over into the next book? Like, what's happening? And she manages to wrap it up in such a cool way that every book ends on an HEA, but it is, you're in it for every second. So I'm going to say that this was overall five. Angst, it was a five. And Spice Wise, it was a three. I absolutely love Kat and Nico. The next book in the series is Make Me Sin. And this is an enemies to lovers. And it's also a love triangle. This is, whew, I loved this because this is definitely a broken hero. And the broken hero is AJ. And AJ is the brooding sort of a silent type. He is, he definitely, every time he runs into Chloe, and Chloe is the best friend of Kat. And every time he runs into Chloe, he is like just so angry and so mean and so nasty to her. And she doesn't understand why he treats her like this, uh, but he does. And for whatever reason, they're thrown together. He, and you find out that he's mean to her because he doesn't know how else to treat her because he doesn't know how to deal with the feelings that she evokes in him. She clearly knows that he's broken. She doesn't know why. She has to get closer to him to understand what the demons are that he's fighting against. He's fighting against the feelings that he has for her there's definitely deception and lies drama that goes on in this book that is absolutely heartbreaking there's a mystery to be solved and is everything the way that you think that it is and is all as it seems to be or is there more to the story and why do things happen work out and happen the way that they do and it's always for a reason it this is my favorite book in the series and like i said this is an enemies to lovers there is a love triangle it is so so good it is an overall five it's an angst a five and spice a three and i love this couple and we see them throughout the rest of the series as well and it's just amazing sin with me this is brody and grace's story grace we see I love this couple so much. Grace is best friends with Chloe and Kat, okay? And Grace is a marriage and family therapist or she's a psychologist or something. She's a therapist. And Grace is a take no nonsense, take no prisoners kind of person. And she's not gonna take bullshit from anybody. Grace had an accident as a young girl where her family was killed and as a result, she lost her memory. So she had to re, she doesn't remember anything prior to a certain age. Brody sort of, you know, comes comes to her in a weird sort of way. He's attracted to her. They are gonna try to make a go of it, but clearly they both have secrets. Brody clearly has a secret. There's something that's connected because Brody, and what brings them together is that Brody was in an accident as well. And so, and he has lost people that were close to him. And so that sort of bonds them together. And so it is absolutely like a ride that is a twist and turns and there are characters in here that you're going to meet that you're going to see later their story is heartbreaking but it is and it's breathtaking it's beautiful it's wonderful and it's a story that needs to be told it is so good it's so good because you were just like i said the plot twist the twists and turns that happen it's absolutely amazing this i gave a five angst a five and spice a four so good so then the last little novella is called How to Sin, and this is about Barney or Nasir. And this is the story that sort of connects to the Dangerous series over here. Because Barney or Nasir is leaving, not working as a bodyguard for the band any longer. He got a security job with a security firm doing um, extraction work because he has a military background and so he's going to be working for Connor over here that owns this organization and so this is his sort of going away party we sort of learn that you know Nasir was married to a girl named Severin and she died from breast cancer and it was really really terrible and they wondered often why they never saw him with anyone or a woman or whatever and you start to understand and learn why this is but he is going off to embark on this job the job is that he's going to have to extract a or 
not extract. He's going to go and surveil and watch a bratva Russian princess who has run off and left her husband. And his job is to watch her and do nothing but report back on her movements. And so this is sort of wrapping up the Bad Habits series and going into the spinoff of The Beautiful. And we'll talk about that in a bit. So overall, this is really good. I gave this, it's a novella, so I gave it like a 4.75. It's definitely good. It's worth it. So that wraps up that series. So then we go into The Wicked Beautiful. And I want to throw this book across the room. The heroine in this really drove me fucking crazy. This book had the potential of being like a five star, six star, like an amazing, amazing read. But this had tropes in it that I cannot stand. I cannot stand. So the story is about Victoria Price and Parker Maxwell. Okay. And Victoria makes her living on being a man eater. And it's her desire to coach women to be strong and independent and not need men. But she is known to like eat men up and spit them out. She's ruthless. She's wealthy. And she is a total bitch. And she makes no bones about it. So and then she meets Parker and it's very clear from the very beginning that Parker she knows from childhood and Parker did some really messed up stuff to her which is broke up with her via a letter and left her alone and never with any explanation after taking her virginity. But nothing is ever as it seems and so the story sort of unfolds from there. She makes a plan to destroy Parker's life but as the story is being told Parker's this really amazing guy that has no real skeletons in her, in his closet so you kind of are like how did he do this awful thing that you say that he did and he doesn't recognize her because she had a complete makeover a plastic surgery changed her name and became somebody else and so throughout the entire book she lies to him she plots to destroy him she sets up scenarios to get him in trouble or have money taken from him or all these awful things happen to him. And there's also another surprise sort of thing that she keeps to herself. And she never once, when everything sort of resolves itself, she never once apologized for anything that she did. She never once said, I'm sorry for lying. She never revealed that she lied. It was all revealed, not by her, but by somebody else. And the other person that revealed it, like it did it in a way that they were forced to reveal it, not because it was like, you know what? We should come clean about what's happened. So for me, I was like, that's total bullshit. Like I call bullshit on that because if a dude would have done this, the shit that she pulled in this book to a chick, we would have been an uproar we would have been like oh hell no how is it that a man is allowed to treat a woman like this and this is not acceptable and no 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 and over here we're supposed to go oh it's all right like this 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 book pissed me off i wanted to throw it out like, i just couldn't take it like i don't go with i don't go with the and then he looks for her for months and months spoilers months like six months he like tracks her down and like does all kind of, like i was like dude you need to be like nicks no, I'm not going to be chasing you across the globe after you tried to destroy me and destroy my businesses and you plotted to have revenge against me and get me thrown in jail and all kinds of bullshit. I was like, no, bye. So it was still an interesting read and I really liked it. Um, and it, it was so I gave it a three angst because it was so freaking over the top. I gave it a five angst wise and spice it's a three so definitely i put it in the revenge plot and then a second chance romance but i was like don't give her a second chance she didn't deserve it doesn't deserve it because this is like this is nonsense what she did so then the next book in the series is wicked sexy this is tabitha tabitha is best friends with victoria and so we learn about tabitha Ta tabitha is a genius and she has a genius level IQ and she's a hacker. And so she is known to be able to hack any system imaginable. Like she just is, her skills are unprecedented in terms of her ability levels and what she can do. And so she is a genius level MIT computer hacker dropout. Connor is the, he's a badass private security firm owner. And he is the one who sort of um, recruited Nasir from over here. And so he then meets her because of a series of events that are brought on over here in this book and he absolutely falls for her. And he decides that he wants Tavis's help to take on this nemesis 
that is trying to destroy another organization and so he brings her on to his security agency and when he brings her on she takes him by the balls and she holds him dear and she basically runs the show and this is like the wicked series is all about these really strong female characters that are take no prisoner take no shit i'm gonna lead my dude around by the balls and like and if you don't like it take a hike because i don't need you type situation that's this the whole series is like that so there's mysteries to be solved there's past enemies to kind of you know figure out so this is definitely an enemies to lovers and an age gap i kind of don't like enemies to lovers in that it's like i'm fighting against you fighting against you i'm the heroine i'm fighting against you not gonna be honest about how i feel but internally i'm like pissed off and angry that i'm attracted to you and i don't like it so i'm really i'm more mean to you and more disrespectful because I don't want to be attracted to you but I am and so the guys are like chasing behind them and I'm just like it doesn't work for me I don't really like it but it's interesting nonetheless but so much of that after a while you're like oh fuck here we go again like just get over it like go have sex somewhere and go, it doesn't make you weak to fall for somebody and just because you're in a relationship with them doesn't mean that you're giving up your identity I don't understand how that equates and it doesn't make any sense to me but okay so overall I gave it a four angst wife I gave it a four and spice I gave it a four and then the last book in the series is wicked intention and this is ryan and he is an ex-special ops officer and um mariana and she is a jewel thief so there's lots of lies and deception a lot of fear a lot of anger when they first meet he knows that she's lying she knows that they're that that she knows everybody knows that like she's not being honest but he's willing to let it go to try to see where the relationship goes and of course she deceives him she follows through with her mission she like steals some stuff Ryan's not gonna let it go he tracks her down and then the story sort of evolves from there you get to see all the other characters from previous books this one didn't get, piss me off as much but it also wasn't quite as interesting it was just like okay so she's a jewel thief and like we find out more about her and she's connected to the bratva and the italian mob and so it sort of evolves from there so overall i gave it a three angst wise i gave it a three and spice wise i gave it a three and so i'm going to talk about all three of these together because i don't want to spoil anything so the first is dangerous beauty the second is dangerous games and then the third is dangerous desires and so let me say i absolutely love this series it was phenomenal amazing phenomenal so damn good so this is about nasir and eva and nasir took on this job to rest to surveil a Ru russian bratva princess who left her husband and has run away his job is to surveil her and watch her and take pictures and report back and that's it but as is always the case as he's following her he sees there's more to the story she is accosted by some ms-13 gang members he rescues her when they start to have a conversation he realizes that there's more to the story than he knows and it really evolves from there and this is definitely a love triangle a forbidden love story it is spice and angst and russian bratva mafia situation all entangled there's captor captive there's torture there's so much that goes into this series it is so damn good that i'm telling you overall the series is a five angst wise it's a five and spice wise it's a four and by the time that you get to this over here these like ladder books this end book it is just you're like oh my god you're gasping you can't even believe what's happening it is so so good and nasir and eva you want them to make it you want to see what's happening like i said there's captor captive situation there's torture there's abduction there's you know espionage there's angst there's so much going on to this and so much that's poured into this this is like heartbreaking but devastating but beautifully devastating it's so so good so without without a doubt you absolutely have to check out all of these characters over here because it is so so good and i think the other thing that i want to say is also in here are connected you're going to get connor and tabitha that you met over here they're going to be in this series as well so these these and it definitely is kind of cool because you get to see all the connections and if you're a purist like myself where you want to see how all the characters connect and you want to get what their backstories are then read them in that order because then you'll know when the characters come you're like i know where who you are i know where you came from i know what's going on i know what this means so it's just like it gives you everything okay 
Okay, so then the next series that I want to talk about is Beautifully Cruel Duet. So there's Beautifully Cruel and Cruel Paradise. Um, like I said, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm going to say that this is about True and Liam. And this is a poor waitress from a poor family in sort of like a backwater town, right? And Liam is a ruthless killer. He's the head of the Irish Mafia. He comes into the same diner and he's intrigued by her. And he's been watching her for the better part of a year. And he is really, really interested and wants to take it further. But knows if he brings her into his world, she's going to be in danger. And so he really hesitates in doing that. She is attacked, and as a result of this attack, he comes in and saves her and prevents her, you know, he rescues her, prevents her from being harmed. And he warns her away from him and says, like, you know, like, I'm a bad guy. Like, you probably should tell me to leave. And she's like, I'm not going to do that. And Diego, there's this other character in here. He's like, that dude, he goes, I'm from the barrio. I'm from, like, MS-13 territory. Like, I know bad dudes. That guy's a bad dude. Trust me when I'm telling you, like, stay away from him. And she doesn't. She, she can't stay away from him. And so, as a result, she gets into a relationship with him. So I'm going to say that this is, I'm not going to say it's enemies to lovers, but there is like a sort of like an angst, a push and pull. This is a forced proximity, Irish mafia, age gap of a 15 year romance. And it is freaking amazing. I absolutely loved it. And I love being introduced to the Irish mob and all of the characters in the Irish mob here. And so overall, I gave this a 3.75. Angst wise, I gave it a three and spice, I gave it a two. Then the follow-up is the second book, and this is Cruel Paradise, and this is Killian's story. We find out about Killian over here. Killian is introduced, okay, in these last two books. We want to know more about Killian, and so we are intrigued by Killian, and we want more. We find out who Killian is here. And so this is his story. And I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't want to give it away. I'm just going to say that this is about espionage. This is about secrets. This is about deception, lies, the mafia, the Irish mob, and the bratva, and deception and revealing secrets and working all angles and trying to sort it out and it's like twists and turns and plot twists and what a tangled web we weave when we practice to deceive. So I'm going to say overall this is a four, angst wise it's a four and spice wise it's a three. It's so good. And so then that brings me up to monsters and I don't know the, the final series that I wanted to talk about and this is Ruthless Creatures and God, I love this series so much. It's so good. This is this particular book is about Nat and Cage. So Natalie is, or Nat, her fiance disappeared the day before their wedding. He goes on a hike. He says, I'll see you when, I'll see you when I get back. And he never returns. And that was five years ago. And so now next door, this brooding, giant, tattooed, angsty dude moves in next door and is living next to her. Nat's best friend Sloane is like, that's the dude that lives next door to you, girl. There's always the crazy best friend and Sloane is the crazy best friend. She's like, girl, you need to jump on that. And Nat has dated people, but she's never done anything or gone any further than dating because she just hasn't been able to move past losing her fiance. Because the belief is that he slipped off one of the craggy rocks and fell to his death. And so Cage comes in and it's apparent that he's needs something he wants something and when they actually do talk he's like i'm gonna do this and i was gonna say the terrible words he just pull out <laughs> he just says some stuff and she's like oh my god nobody's ever said anything like that to me he's like i when i see something i want i just go for it she's like not happening he's like all right i'm gonna give you my card he's like reach out to me should you need anything but it's clear that he's there for a reason and he's got a secret and he wants something and it's clear that he's a bad dude it's clear that he's connected and it's clear and it's clear that it's tied to natalie but the secrets are not revealed right away and so he leaves and some months pass and then he's back and he's like listen he knocks on her door and he's like i couldn't i couldn't stay away i gotta like i gotta explore this thing with you we gotta figure it out and the story sort of evolves from there and this is a forbidden relationship that's never going to work because you learn more about who cage is and so this is so so good it is a five overall an angst of a three and a spice of a three and it delivers it delivers in so many ways i love it i love it it's so good don't sleep on it 
and you thought that was good and then you get into like every book just keeps getting better and better and better and better and so then carnal urges this is about sloan and so sloan is nat's best friend and so as everything sort of wraps up with Nat and Cage, Sloane is like, she was dating this other like Rush, like Russian brat for kind of guy. And it's like, who are these Russian guys? And what's going on? There was a shootout at the, at the, the restaurant that they went to where it was like Cage and Nat and Sloane and these two Russian dudes. And then all of a sudden the Irishmen come in and they start shooting. So there's some drama going on. Okay, so that then pulls in the Irish mob. So you see how these books are like getting all connected because if we're pulling in some Irish Jews, then you know we're going to be bringing in people from over here. And that's exactly what happens. So N Sloan is going to visit Nat and Cage in New York and she gets off the plane. She's drunk as a skunk. She gets into the limo and as she's like walking out, she gets ki uh, kidnapped. And she gets kidnapped by who? Declan. And Declan comes in over here because he's connected with Killian and he's connected with all the dudes from over there from the beautiful to connected to Liam and all those guys over there so Declan kidnaps her and like daddy Declan is like playing no no joke Sloan is like a force to be reckoned with as soon as he kidnapped her Sloan is like bah, 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 and you're not gonna do this and he's like oh my god he's like are you crazy he's like what is wrong with you there is something clearly wrong with you do you not understand who I am and that what situation you is and she's like I know what situation I am and I don't care and blah 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 and Sloan but surely when it's a captor captive situation somebody always catches feelings but in JT book JT's books it's always the guy that's gonna catch feelings for these fierce headstrong females and not only does Declan fall for her but all the rest of his army and the guys that are in his army like Kieran and you know all the other dudes they fall for her too and so they like are quickly like looking towards her as becoming the queen and so it is like twists and turns and plot twists and a lot of stuff going on a lot of espionage a lot of secrets a a lot of ties and connections to previous books it's all a web of things that's why I say you have to read it in this order and so let me say this there is also some BDSM element and Sloan is fierce and feisty and is like take no prisoners and she's just going after what she wants but Declan Declan is like you could be all that out there but in here He's like, you take your pick. Like, we got floggers and paddles and crops and handcuffs and all kinds of stuff. And which one would you like tonight, baby? And it is beautiful. It is beautiful. It is really, really good. So overall, I gave it a five. Angst-wise, I gave it a three. And spice-wise, I gave it a four. It is so good. And then the final book in the series right now that's released, because like I said, the next one, which is going to be, the next one is going to be, um spider story so i can't wait to hear spider story so the next book is gonna be spider story it's gonna come out later but this is savage hearts and this is riley's story and riley is who this is the sister of sloan riley is exactly the same character as sloan she's feisty she's fierce she is take no prisoners she's gonna say what's on her mind genius level iq very very intelligent and she's just gonna do what she wants to do and again, there is a, the character is Malek and Malek is wanting to take revenge against Declan because Declan killed Malek's brother. So when you are in the Bratva, the Irish mob, the Italian mob, there is a never ending cycle of you killed one of ours, we're going to kill one of yours or take one of yours hostage to make up for what you've done and to make amends and then the cycle continues. So this is another situation where there is revenge. It's a revenge plot for killing a family member. And this is a captor captive situation. This also is a slow burn because it is a captor captive situation. And it is so, so good. I feel like this story was one of the best books in this particular series. It was really, really good. And I love broken characters. Malek is like the ghost, right? Like he is the enforcer. He is the second in command to the Khan. And so he's very high ranking in the Russian Bratva and he wants to take out obviously the head of the Irish clan. And so like you get all the characters from previous books, like you have, you know, Sloane, obviously you have Declan in here. You also have, you know, Sloane's best friend, Nat. So therefore you have Cage in here as well from the first book, Carnal Urges. So there's just, everybody is all tangled. It's a tangled web that we weave. And so overall, I gave this a five. Angst-wise, I gave it a four. And spice-wise, I gave it a four. 
And so, like I said, JT Gessinger is an amazing, amazing writer. She writes a story that, like, the web that she that she weaves is interconnected and complex. And this is a complex sort of story of espionage and spying and government entanglement and mafia, both Italian mafia, Irish mafia, and the Russian bratva. It's a story of best friends that grew up together that are all very, very close in all of the series you know the women are all very close to one another they're also very fierce strong independent our take no prisoners type attitudes are not going to let the men in their lives rule their lives they are a, a, like a force to be reckoned with within their own right but at the same time for the men that they love it is like a power couple they come together and are intense and will work together to bring an empire down or to bring an uh, to rise and create an empire and so these are really really fierce fierce characters um and it shouldn't be fierce like one doesn't have to be fierce over the other that we can both be fierce together and so that's sort of what, if you're looking for strong leads this is what jt is going to offer you in the books that she has written and so far I'm really really happy I have two other books by her that are standalones I have perfect strangers I believe is one and another one I can't remember the name of it and so I'm gonna get to those later on in the week but you guys this is all that I have for today I hope that you guys have tuned in to check out our live show with JT this evening um, well, it's when you will have watched it, it will already have aired. But if you haven't checked it out, please go back and take a look at it. But that's all that I have for today. So do me a favor, hit the like button because it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed to my channel so you can be notified every time I upload a new video, which is three times a week. I have no idea what days it's gonna be because I'm just all over the place, but that's okay. You guys are seeming to be okay with that. And that's it. So I plan on seeing you in my next video.